January 30, 2020, the World Health Organization declared the outbreak a public health emergency of international concern with a high-risk assessment on the global scale. Baguio City's mayor was one of the first to respond to the crisis. It is something different. We've never experienced this before. Usually when you talk about crisis management, we talk about disasters, we talk about uh, terrorism. Pero ito, iba na. An expert in crisis management, Mayor Benjamin Magalong made the difficult decision of postponing the Panagbenga, the city's most important festival and other related activities on January 31. On March 11, COVID-19, the illness caused by the novel coronavirus, was declared a pandemic by the WHO. On March 16, President Rodrigo Duterte announced the placement of the entire island of Luzon, including its associated islands, on enhanced community quarantine, in effect imposing a lockdown on the island. In order to stem the movement of the coronavirus into the city, Baguio was put under citywide community quarantine from March 16 to April 15. Executive orders were issued by Mayor Magalong to suspend all tourism activities and close all tourist sites. Noong una, siyempre alam natin na malaki yung impact sa ekonomiya natin. Pero later on, after a few months, lalo na nung naging heightened na itong COVID-19 threat, saka natin na-realize na tama pala yung ating decision. Because isa lang ang nasa mindset ko eh, is it the right thing to do? Tourism accounts for 12.7% of the country's GDP. In 2019, 1,978,000 tourists visited the Cordillera Administrative Region, or CAR, exploring sites such as Ifugao, Mountain Province, Apayao, Kalinga, and Abra. Baguio, famous for its rich cultural heritage, cool climate, and forests of pine, claimed 77% of those tourists, generating 6 billion pesos in tourism receipts, making the City of Pines the primary destination of choice in the Cordillera. In the last three months since the pandemic struck our city, businesses reliant on tourist arrivals, hotels, lodges and inns and restaurants, they all closed down. Jobs vanished, incomes got lost, The COVID-19 pandemic cost the city of Baguio 1.4 billion pesos in revenue and lost opportunities. 4,000 tourism sector workers, including artists and performers, have been affected by the crisis. Kung walang turismo, lahat affected. Pati yung mga nasa market, lahat ng negosyo, may do domino effect talaga yan. In addressing the crisis, three stages have been identified the mitigation or response phase, transition phase, and recovery phase. During the mitigation period, a paramount concern is offering help and encouragement to stakeholders in the tourism industry. We have now uh, reprogrammed our budget so that we can be able to assist tour guides especially because we know that uh, most of our tour guides are uh, freelance tour guides. First and foremost, we have done resiliency and uh, recovery training, teaching them alternative livelihood that they can undertake during the pandemic. So they're giving us webinars, so every now and then they email us about opportunities of learning. That's why, in my case, I was able to come up with a small business that will somehow help local weavers, artists, all products that are made in Baguio. We will be selling and promoting it nationwide and eventually, when this pandemic is over, hopefully worldwide. Another important aspect of the mitigation phase is providing assistance to the 249 domestic and foreign tourists who found themselves stranded in the Cordilleras. DOT CAR immediately set up a help desk and DOT helpline for the region, and advisories were issued for all stranded tourists in the Cordilleras. The DOT also coordinated with the Department of Foreign Affairs and various embassies to help foreign tourists make it to their repatriation flights. 
I've been stranded here in Ifugao now for two months. I saw it in the local news that the Department of Tourism is helping stranded people, stranded tourists all over the Philippines. The Department of Tourism actually arranged the driver, the car, and yeah, they organized everything. The Department of Tourism in Baguio helped us a lot. They kept us updated with information, which was really good. We're thankful to them. In the case of domestic tourists, they need to await a declaration from their respective LGUs that they are allowed to go home. These locally stranded individuals, or LSIs, must first secure a medical certificate and the required travel passes before they are allowed to leave Baguio. We partner kami sa Victory Liner. We partner din tayo sa Department of Transportation. Nagbigay siya ng fuel for the bus, so it's really a partnership na among government agencies and yung private sector natin at saka yung uh, Regional Interagency Task Force, kasama rin, so DILG, at saka yung local government of Baguio. Sa Baguio lang po, magpapasalamat po kami na maganda yung patak pagpapatakbo nila. Meron pa silang mga binibigay bago umuwi. Nakita po namin yung ad ng DOT sa Facebook na yung mga stranded um, persons na mag-send ng details, names and address. Lagi naman po silang nag-update sa amin. Kinakamusta po kami. We wish you a safe trip. No? At uh, sana po ay makalating kayo ng matiwasay at pakasama nyo na ang inyong mga pamilya. The DOT, together with the Tourism Promotions Board, allotted 2,000 pesos cash assistance per domestic tourist. 2,000 pesos, and ito po is konting goodies galing po sa Department of Tourism para po sa inyo. When we were calling them at first, we did not even give any commitment. It's like we were saying, how are you? Okay po ba naman? May pagkain pa ba? And all that. So depending on their reason, then that's, that's how we were able to, you know, uh, grade them. Kasi we, can, we don't have all the resources to give. Nung unang araw, kumontak din kami dito sa ano, tourism po. Hindi namin akalain na ganito po yung gagawin nyo sa amin kahit hindi naman kami taga dito sa Baguio po. When we go and see them and they are happy that they are visited, no? It's also partly fulfilling, nakaka-proud to be in government. Efforts were also made to bring back Baguio residents who were stranded in other parts of the Philippines. I stranded po ako sa Dabo for two months. Uh, pumunta po ako doon for works and seminars lang. The OT Baguio, they provided me uh, transportation. So sinundo po nila ako ng airport, tapos sinatid po nila ako papunta dito sa Baguio. Hello guys, Julia again. I'm back in Germany. Thank you to the Department of Tourism, to the people in uh, Ifugao. Thank you very much again for keeping me there. Maraming salamat. At this time of crisis, the private sector, they are doing their share in the, being a part of the solution. Some, uh, we appreciate that some of them uh, have volunteered to be quarantine facilities for our uh, OFWs and even for our health workers. Some have even given for free. Some uh, were encouraged to charge for a uh, lower rate. This pandemic, when it rose to that uh, scale, of course, there was to, this was to, total uh, stoppage of these uh, tourism activities and uh, the market is uncertain. Though they went back to their original uh, livelihood, like the farmers, buti nga at yung lockdown na harvest season at least. So all kinds of vegetables were already ready for market. We also have uh, organized a volunteerism movement you know, that would involve the tour guides. We have asked them to volunteer, uh, do planting activities, do uh, cleaning up activities. Tourism in a post-COVID world means adopting heightened safety and health protocols, such as mandatory wearing of face masks, 
social distancing in parks, public transport, and restaurants, scanning body temperature, and limiting the number of people in tourism sites. Lagi na highlight yung city of Baguio as one of the uh, most disciplined cities. And it's probably because of the people. Inherently, uh, mga taga Baguio talagang masunurin. We are like the model city, and I hope we can maintain that. But soon, we really soon need to open. And for the people who shall come up here, panawagan ko lang na sila rin maging as disciplined. Alam nyo, ang advice ko lang sa tourism sector is, we just simply have to manage yung expectation ng tao. Hindi natin pwedeng bigla eh. As community quarantine measures gradually relax, the DOT shifts its marketing initiatives toward promoting domestic tourism. Together with the private sector-led Baguio Tourism Council, the Angat Tayo Baguio campaign was created, focusing on the city's successful enforcement of health and safety protocols, Baguio's rich culture and history, and emphasizing the creativity of its people. We at the Baguio Tourism Council thought it best to come up with fresh tourism initiatives that can jumpstart the tourism stagnance. Angat Tayo Baguio was born, a simple yet alluring invitation to welcome tourists anew. Hopefully, the city will open its gates once more after September 1, Baguio Day, to tourists who seek the best that Baguio has to offer. If you look at what the tourists would want uh, after the pandemic, they would really look for destinations that would give them some kind of a rejuvenation from the lockdown blues. We will have to offer farm tourism. We have seen how important it is for us to grow our own food. We have also seen the importance of agriculture in our lives. We will offer uh, farm sites. People can go there and learn how to plant and uh, learn from our farmers and uh, eat healthy farm produce. Another is, if you want to rejuvenate, you can climb again the mountains, have uh, some adventure. You can climb all of these mountains we have in the Cordilleras. It's the time for you to, you know, reconnect with nature. Baguio has its own natural attraction, uh, especially if you're based in Manila or in the lowlands. You want to get away from all of that uh, heat, from the traffic, the stress, including the peace and order condition. No, because uh, at least when you go up to Baguio, it somehow makes you feel at home, comfortable, and uh, safe. As we strive to flatten the curve, rehabilitate our cities, and give encouragement to those working in the tourism sector, we see a glimmer of light in the fog of uncertainty. That light is hope. Very, very confident ako. Why? Because we have a plan. And our plan is both, uh, you know, short-term, long-term, strategic. Second is efficient, yung mga tao natin. We're going to carry out the plan, or they're competent. Third is we have a very supportive private sector. And then uh, finally, a very cooperative uh, community. Probably there are several humps to hurdle pa. Pero importante is we're moving forward. Pag bumagsak tayo, babangon tayo. If we were able to rise from from the earthquake. I think the earthquake was the worst. This is just a glitch again. As of now, nakaka-depress. The Lord is teaching us something to take care not just of our environment, but also our families. Each individual dito sa city, dapat ipakita nila ang pagmamahal nila, lalo na sa ngayon dito sa ating syudad, na talagang kailangan yung sinasabi nga nilang bayanihan. With the partnership we have with the private sector and the open line communication, we are very much uh, confident that uh, we can be able to bounce back easily. Kailangan kung aangat tayo, kailangan iangat din natin yung ating uh, mga partners sa Bliss. At hindi lang Bliss, sama-sama tayong aangat. It should be Cordillera working as one and Cordillera healing as one. Throughout this crisis, the stakeholders of the Cordillera tourism industry have displayed great unity and have gone the extra mile to come to each other's aid, I am certain that your efforts will allow this breathtakingly beautiful region to fulfill its potential as a destination of choice once again, and perhaps even sooner than expected.